It is Wednesday, my dudes, and you know what that means. It is time once again to revisit Velocity Lake. And I may recall in the last episode, I started construction of this bridge, as in I built a path and that was it. And it looks a bit naff. And you do, you guys probably know at this point that I do enjoy, I do like a good bridge. So that's what we're going to do in this episode. We're going to try and dress this bridge up and make it nice and modern looking. I'm gone, I've gone for like a sleek uh, modern looking suspension bridge style, which I'm guessing you kind of already know from the thumbnail, but hopefully the elaboration of watching it be built and, you know, seeing all the little details that went into it will be entertaining nonetheless. <laughs> so this will be the bridge that connects the uh, Street Fox Coffee area, like little plaza by the Dragon Coaster, to the Industrial Coaster, because the Industrial Coaster that we built, it's really well and good, but it does seem to be a bit oddly placed, like just in this weird off, like, corner at the edge of the park, and you have to go through this quite narrow path behind the back of the red B&M to actually get to it. And so I thought it would make more sense if it was a little bit more integrated into the rest of the park's kind of infrastructure, make it a little bit more easily accessible. So I'm connecting it to the little hub that is the Street Fox coffee shop. Uh, obviously, that's already got the arch suspension bridge that takes you to the pseudo sci-fi area with the red and yellow coasters and then we can add this bridge here that takes you to this part and of course that area also leads back towards the Intamin Megalite and the park entrance. So uh, that, that's, that's the little hub that sort of blossomed out of this uh, bridge area. So that's the actual bridge structure done so far but obviously it just seems to be levitating of its own accord, so that needs to be addressed. All I'm going to do is build these, uh, I love the temple pieces so much. <laughs> the adventure pack is probably the best DLC pack just because you get the temple pieces. The temple pieces are great because they're basically like normal building pieces, but they're not bound to a grid. You can do this advanced movement tool, you can use that and have them at crazy angles and not just vertically uh, relative to the floor. Which is something Planet Coaster desperately needs more of, and I've actually got, the like, Frontier gave me a key for the Planet Zoo beta. I haven't got around to playing it yet, but I'm told that there are far less kind of dedicated grid pieces. Like, there's more pieces like this that can just be manipulated using the advanced move tool. So that's going to be a good thing. I think Planet, because, like, Planet Zoo is very, very, very similar to Planet Coaster in terms of how its builders works. But, you know, there's lots of, like, quality of life improvements. So Planet Zoo... Um, so Planet Coaster was probably just the uh, experimental, like the beta version of all the other Planet games. I think they've really listened to feedback and are going to take in any mistakes. So Planet Zoo will refine the tools and hopefully any kind of Planet Coaster 2 will uh, be a vast, vast improvement and we'll get some really, really good features. But who knows? I mean, if, for me, Planet Coaster is pretty much a perfect game <laughs> for building theme parks. There are some glaring issues. Obviously, the path tool is one thing that comes up time and time again in not just my video, but everyone's videos, because it is objectively terrible. <laughs> uh, but also the coaster builder. I've said before as well that Planet Coaster is a great theme park building game, but it's a terrible roller coaster building game. Like, at first, like it's a huge improvement over things like Roller Coaster Tycoon, which just had the snapping and that's it. But you compare it to something like No Limits and No Limits 2, uh, it's it's terrible. Like, you can't get smooth coasters at all, and they don't really have a heart line. They have, the devs did kind of address this by adding the banking offset tool. But even so, the coasters themselves, it's very, very difficult to get them smooth and realistic. Generally, if you want a smooth coaster, you need to do that 4-meter technique that we used to build the yellow coaster there. And that took me hours and hours and hours to do. So... If we could have some sort of way of building smooth coasters without needing to do that, that would probably be a very good improvement and probably worth a sequel alone. But I guess other things, graphics updates, uh, being able to have more textures in the game, like rather than just six that you can just chop and change between, would be nice as well. And the actual sandbox areas you build on, uh, as in like the settings, are a bit like... I wish there was a bit more. So I think at the moment we've got this one, which is like an alpine setting. There's a city setting, I think, as well. But that's... Uh, there's not many, put it that way. They're all basically big, empty fields. But it'd be nice to have something like maybe like a water biome. So you can build island parks or beach parks and stuff like that. Or, I don't know. That's it, actually. That's the only one I want. <laughs> or just like a completely flat biome. Because at the moment, you have to kind of build to the edge of the map but the edges of the map the terrain is fixed so if you had a flat park but then the actual bit at the edge of the map is a hill you'll get this ridiculous steep cliff and it looks really tacky i don't know if this was a very good description of what i'm trying to get across but basically it would be nice to be able to have a bit more um c creative control over the maps 
Uh, I don't know how I've kind of become, <laughs> I've kind of got onto a tangent about a hypothetical planet coaster too, but I don't know. Those are some suggestions there. In terms of this video here, I'm pretty sure it's quite obvious what I'm doing. I'm using these pole pieces just because they are basically the best looking cable-like pieces I could find. I know you can literally get cables in this game, but they're very thin, which maybe would be realistic, but I kind of wanted a bit more of a chunky appearance, especially because in Planet Coaster, scale is a bit bigger than real life. Uh, everything in Planet Coaster is just slightly too big, which is another actual uh, thing that could well be improved upon in a sequel, because things like, I don't know, the roller coaster station grid is massive. You have very little creative control over the size of stations. Like in real life, stations aren't always very big at all. But in Planet Coaster, the stations are always massive, blocky buildings to try to accommodate the colossal default station platform. So it'd be nice if that could be trimmed down. And things like those disgusting black barriers, being able to like, control them. I don't know, maybe I should just sit down with a pen and paper and come up with a list of ideas. And if I go to a meet up with Frontier or whatever, I'll just give them that list and then run away. <laughs> uh, off into the sunset and know that I may have made a difference. <sighs> so as you may have been able to tell, this is a very tedious process. <laughs> this uh, placing of the poles, you have to do it very kind of piece by piece. And I thought, oh, now I've done one side, I can just clone that across. And then I realized I couldn't because uh, the way the way buildings work. <laughs> so I had to do it again for the other side. So that was lots and lots of fun. But uh, I don't know. I think once I'd done it once, it was pretty easy to quickly do it again. I might just speed up the footage a little bit just because it will be harder to appreciate what's going on because the camera does move around quite a bit, but you can probably already figure out what's happening, so you're not going to miss out on too much if the footage is played a little bit faster at this point. So, uh, yeah, there go the cables there. Luckily, when it comes to making the other side of this tower, we can just duplicate everything we've done. This is the only part that's very, very tedious in this build, just placing these cables. But it looks like there's only a couple more to go now. And then we can get to, uh, well, actually, we're coming quite close to the end of this video now, aren't we, I guess? I'm trying to think what else it needs doing. Actually, I did end up moving the placement of this central tower. The eagle eyed among you may have noticed that in the thumbnail, that the tower was centrally placed, rather than having two towers either side, because I don't think the length of this bridge really necessitated having two towers for the cables, especially the size of which I'd placed the cables. It would have been a bit too bibby, like long, the cable stayed bit. So we're just going to copy the whole thing across, move it to the center, duplicate it around, and there we go, just there. So that's the uh, the suspension part of the suspension bridge, and there we go. I really like this bridge, actually. I think it could be my favorite bridge. I know I say that every single time we do an episode where I build a bridge, but I think this could be my favorite bridge I've built in this park. I liked it so much, I placed it again later on, like a lot later on for you guys, probably... I don't know, 10 episodes maybe. But yeah, I do. I did I did modify it slightly, but it is kind of, I don't know, is it an art deco style maybe? Kind of. These temple pieces, when you paint them white, do have that kind of bulky, curved, but also brutalist-ish look of art deco, which isn't really a very good description of what art deco looks like. But <laughs> I don't know, kind of, I guess just the white looks a bit art deco-y. Who knows? So the bridge would be a bit dull to walk along at night. I say that quite literally. It's too dark. So we need to put some lights up. So then I was trying to find a good uh, solution for adding lampposts. Because like the street lights, like the generic looking street lights in this game, don't really look very good. You can either get the ones that look like they're on the side of a road, or you can just get ones that look like they're in a Victorian park. Neither of which really fit the, uh, the look of this bridge. So initially I thought those cube lights looked kind of nice, but I thought, again, they were a bit chunky. Like I say, Planet Coaster scale is a bit bigger than real life, and I think those lights were just a bit too big for this specific purpose. Then I played around with various other types of custom lampposts before I just settled on these ones, to be honest. You know, these little, they're, they're simple, they do the job, and they are actually quite bright in terms of how much they illuminate. Some of the lights in this game, like, I'm looking at you, sci-fi lights, they provide literally zero ambient lighting. I don't know if it's a bug or a glitch, but those, like, sci-fi lights are so bad <laughs> when it comes to actually, you know, functioning as lights. They provide no light whatsoever. It might be intentional because they're there to be used as sort of scenery pieces that glow, but they don't actually... They're meant to be used in very high quantities that so you don't want to have too much lighting <laughs> made by them. But at the same time, like maybe you could toggle it or something. I, I don't really know why they provide no lighting. And there's a couple of other lights in this game that are very similar. They provide next to no ambient light. 
I don't know if it's a glitch or what or a bug, but that's just the that's the reality we have to deal with here, unfortunately. So I went with these ones because they do provide pretty good ambient light, and they look pretty good as well in terms of how much they you know how much they match the uh, overall architectural style of this bridge. And then we just copy them. So we only need to do one half again. Uh, just copy them all across, and then we can duplicate them. Also, placing the, I place those roof tiles there because those roof tiles are bound to the grid, which means we can, in, which ensure, helps us ensure that we can get those lights lined up nicely with the rest of the bridge. Uh, the grid does have its uses, even though it is a very limiting thing. It is useful for certain applications like that. And then all I'm doing here is just enforcing the structure. It still looks a bit weedy. Uh, we've got those massive sort of posts, I don't know how else to describe them, uh, where the lights are, uh, but they don't really connect to anything. So maybe they could represent the cross beams that go below the bridge's deck and really help support the weight of all those pedestrians. I mean, there's there's no, <laughs> there's no, not going to be very many heavy payloads going across this thing, but I guess, I don't know, service vehicles that supply the, uh, the shops because there's a restaurant by the industrial coaster. And there's also a restaurant at the Street Fox Coffee Shop. It is the Street Fox Coffee Shop. So that will need service vehicles going to it as well. So I guess maybe this could be the vehicular bridge. Who knows? I haven't really thought it through. I just liked the look of it. And that's all I based it on, really. I have no idea if it would even work, like, physically. To me, it looks like it would work as a bridge. And we'll be able to support its weight okay. But I really don't know. I'm not actually an architect which you guys probably know at this point, just from the general awfulness of a lot of my buildings. But uh, I, I think it looks good nonetheless. And for me, that's good enough, I think. <laughs> uh, now we just need to uh, do everyone's favorite topic, uh, curbing uh, in this game, just to kind of connect the path to the base of that bridge. I try to get the path to look a little bit cleaner. It, ultimately, it's very hard to get things not looking terrible in Planet Coast when it comes to the pathing tool. But I think... It looked good enough, and we can just put a plinth light over it to kind of cover that hole. Those plinth lights are so like lazy and tacky, aren't they? But I think they do actually work pretty well, to be honest. So I'm I'm happy with leaving them as they are. And then we can just extend this wall. Uh, I mean, this bridge, it kind of looks weird having this big sort of overhang bit at the end with just that steep slope down. But I guess, I just I was going to say another thing, suggestion for Planet Coaster 2 would be having, like, be able to do smooth transition, like, smooth height transitions for the paths. But really... That just comes under the umbrella of, please, can we just have a good path maker? So, I don't know. Wa water under the bridge, eh? Just like in the theme of this video. <laughs> anyway, the uh, video's actually nearly finished, isn't it? So, I'm just adding some sort of concrete reinforcements to this bit to make it look a little bit less awful. And I think it looked okay, you know. Um, the coaster pieces, uh, I think they were part of... They're supposed to be coaster supports, those concrete plinths, but they also just work as bare concrete stuff so any behind the scenes stuff or road surfaces that aren't really visible to guests or in this case i don't know bridge supports that guests are probably gonna be that bothered about looking very functional um they're quite good for that sort of thing as well and there's the bridge there so i'm just doing a quick darkness test to ensure that the lights still work in a dark setting as in like you know they provide adequate lighting uh in the darkness which like i said earlier a lot of lights in this game surprisingly don't anyway now we just need to uh close off, like open up I should say, this closed up plaza to uh, accommodate the connection to the bridge. And that brings us back to everyone's favourite topic of curbing. Do you remember those curb pieces? You know, the generic brick with the green fences? They were a staple of this series early on and they're, they're making a comeback. I could probably just speed the footage up here to be honest because it's... I, I think you guys get it. You get what's going on. <laughs> so, yep, there's one side done. Now we can quickly do the other side. I really like these fences actually i don't know what they remind me of they remind me of a park i've been to that had very similar fences and i think it really captures that look really nicely because they're not really designed to stop people they're just to kind of stop separate people from plants and stuff like that uh, i think it looks like a little bit less authoritarian than having full height fences uh, at the same time it indicates to guests that this is not something you should be crossing i hope anyway uh, this is a European park, and European parks, from what I have gather from looking at things on Street View, they tend to be a bit more sort of relaxed in terms of guest separation from backstage areas. American parks seem to be very focused on kind of idiot-proofing things. Whereas European parks, there's sometimes you can just literally just step over a one-foot-high fence and you can just enter the confines of a ride. Uh, 
I was watching a video by uh, Mike Sheets, and he made this observation as well. So I know it's not just me. Anyway, uh, there's a lovely shot of the industrial coaster going around in the background. And I guess with that out of the way, we can put an end screen up. On the left-hand side is a link to the full Velocity Lake playlist. And on the right-hand side is one chosen for you by YouTube's recommendation algorithm. This is links to stuff on screen as well and in the description. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your Wednesday.